One thing that hasn't been cold is employment in Nebraska. Recent findings from the United States Department of Labor show statewide unemployment at only 2.8 percent, tied for seventh with Virginia and Minnesota. Nebraska Extension Ag Economist Jim Jansen came on the show to discuss a new report that examines some current Nebraska economic conditions and how it relates to the ag industry. Many folks that choose to work in the ag industry have some kind of a fixation to the industry, whether they grew up in an area, they like the type of work, they like the profession they're in. When we look at retaining these quality individuals, we got to ask ourselves beyond the paycheck, what do we need to do to keep these people here? Some folks it's health insurance, some folks it's a degree of pay. Uh, some people I've even had quoted to me that they're looking for a place to live. Uh, if you're a farm operator and you have an extra acreage or a farm site of some kind, by allowing one of your hired individuals to live there, would that be incentivize them to stay? So keep in mind the area that you live in and relative to the area, what does employment look like there? And what were some of the figures that stuck out to you in this report? I know that uh, payroll employment was one, if, we, if you want to talk about that one sure. first. Yeah, so related to the major uh, sectors in the overall economy, it appears that construction, uh, the manufacturing, professional services have continued to increase over the prior year. Uh, construction is very active in many areas in the metros that are building new homes, new buildings, new stores, whatever it might be. Manufacturing, many areas in the state also have a fairly robust manufacturing sector. As well as there are, were other sectors that were noted a little bit minor to that related to government employment. So whether it's with the federal, state, or local government. Um, areas across Nebraska outside the ag sector appear to be fairly favorable in terms of overall employment in the state. And then in another report, the Federal Reserve says that non-real estate farm debt continues to increase. What do you see as the driving force behind that and what can farmers do? So when we talk about non-farm real estate loans, these would be things like revolving or non-revolving line of credit, the more short-term lending we might say. We've seen a gradual increase over the last year related to uh, current debt, uh, things like that. What this is looking at is when, as a farm operator or a ranch operator, we may not have as much uh, liquidity in our operations in terms of having cash, and that's why we're starting to rely on financial institutions to provide short-term lending. The thing I encourage folks to look at, if you are taking out that type of debt, what kind of interest rates are you paying? And in addition to the interest rates, make sure you are spending your resources on things you need. Maybe uh, you gotta reassess where we're at. I think we can still make things work out in our current ag economy, but we need to be prudent in what we're spending it on. And I know that there were a couple other uh, graphs and charts you wanted to, to talk about, some major findings from, from that report. I know delinquency rates at commercial banks, that was one that really caught your eye. So delinquency rates, yes, our, the overall amount of loans are increasing in the state of Nebraska related to non-real estate or non-ag land loans. But uh, the delinquency rate still remains near historical lows. So that, that goes to show uh, my professional opinion would probably say that we're writing the loans, we're underwriting them at a very solid credit standards, meaning when we lend money out, we're lending at it uh, in a manner that's appropriate for the type of loans that we're making. And uh, the other thing that stood out to me is current interest rates. Interest rates, especially on short-term debt over the last year or two, have increased to an extent related to our operating or our non-current uh, short-term lending. Things that uh, when we make a loan to put in a crop, uh, if we buy livestock, things like that, we're seeing a gradual increase for those types of debt. And the report also talks about the value of irrigated cropland. I thought this was pretty interesting. So Nebraska had a pretty big change, value dropping by 5%. What are we seeing there? So the Kansas City Federal Reserve monitors various types of land. Land classes is what we term them here at the University of Nebraska. Related to that, they noted a decline of around 5% compared to the prior year for the overall state. Uh, surrounding states were down several percent as well. What makes a lot of people in the ag sector concerned about declining ag land values, ag land tend to make up the biggest portion of our balance sheet, whether it's related to lending, whether it's related to going out and acquiring something, or a store of wealth. That being said, we need to be observant of what's happening in the land industry. I don't think it's the end of the world if we're seeing a decline, 
uh, related to that decline, it's healthy to see a gradual decline that reflects the underlying fundamentals of the ag economy. Corn, soybeans, livestock prices, the things that we're raising on our great land that we have here in the state are starting to be reflected into it. We like to see gradual changes in the, our asset values compared to dramatic, instead of 5%, 25%. Mm, sure. Some of our viewers are watching today probably echo some of these double digit declines of the 1980s. I don't think we're to that point. I think we might see a gradual decline over time, but over time it allows us as ag producers as well as agribusinesses to change our decision making and reflect that into our lending practices. The information that Jim was referencing in that story came from the Ag Finance Data Book and the Nebraska Economic Data Book. They're issued by the Kansas City Federal Reserve, which compiles various reports for states in the 10th District, and that includes Nebraska.